Alpha. Yeah, as I said, we were, were juggling the three kids, Siraj's other job and me doing a full-time uh, photography job. And then um, in time, when you start when you start developing systems and start, uh, and I don't mean in the technical, technical term as an IT specialist, but when you start developing a system that helps you to make your workflow efficient, and that is from admin right up until the gear that you are using, um, you find you start adapting. And you start adapting to that point where um, you will be able to manage any unforeseen pressure or circumstance that takes a knock on to your business, right? So just a heads up guys, you are more than welcome to send through those questions uh, via Instagram. I will do my best to look through, but also via the Alpha Un uh, Universe site. And this is such a vast topic. I just want to give you uh, not a warning, but also to please understand that what worked for me can work for you or might not work for you depending on your lifestyle and I want you to be flexible at that. I do not want you to be pressurized by what I'm trying, what I'm explaining to you or how I ran my business. So it can be a small aspect of how probably I juggled my time or how I made time for leisure uh, that you can implement into your business but at the same time I want you to know that all creatives and all business owners have been through it and we are still going through it because as your business prospers challenges are going to uh, are going to change it's going to get different every say two to five years it's not going to be the same compared to us now 11 years ago for example 11 years ago the main platform for us to advertise was either a website or facebook instagram was nowhere and at that time i had to learn direct marketing tactics so a lot of my marketing strategies were implemented when I got to meet people. So I went into a lot of networking events, um, a lot of workshops as well. And this is the other thing why we encourage workshops is that you need to understand that the better and the bigger you make your network, the easier it is for you to get your business out there. And it's about being open to, to, to suggestions, even criticisms, and criticisms in a good way that will help your business to grow, right? So now we're going to move on to a quick one where you can find us on social media and onto our website. So if you have a look, for those who printed out the slides, uh, firstly emailed me and printed out the slides, um, as I said, this is all about network. So I want you guys to take a very interesting BTS shot of you listening to this live stream or taking down notes onto the slides, even you Instagram guys. If you can take a very interesting BTS shot of this live stream, share it onto your story, tag TTL photography, uh, tag your business um, and TTL photography in that, in that story post, I will return the favor because this is what it's all about, being a community. Being a community to encourage and to inspire and just help you guys be motivated during this very cloudy period in our lives, right? So we're gonna move on. Yes, so these are the uh, social media handles you can get us on. That's our website, the first one, uh, ttlphotographs.co.ca, uh, our Instagram handle and our Facebook page. So you can give us a shout, not a problem. Um, and then we're gonna move on to my favorite quote. You don't know what you are capable of until you have to do it. Yes, I can vouch for that one. Um, just remember something, as I said before, I was a BCom student. Um, firstly, I never wanted to do BCom. I always wanted to do physiotherapy. And then in, in 2004, it was a case of, um, just give me a second guys. There we go. Um, yeah, in 2000, yeah, before 2004, IT, 
it was all about IT and coming from an Indian household for those who can relate you know what it's like growing up in an Indian household you either become an accountant doctor lawyer at that time it was IT profession <laughs> um, and I pursued business I went into a Bachelor of Commerce where I majored in marketing finance and management and then got married to an enthusiastic photographer who was in an IT, uh, uh, IT field and photography still never interested me. Never, not at once. Until this request came through and then I said, oh, let's go with it because I'm a person who can adapt. And I will declare myself a self-taught photographer. And I know it's, it's, a bit, it's a, bit, a bit scary. It was very, very scary for me because I knew nothing. And till today, I will not consider myself a technical photographer. I leave that for all the guys. Um, and, I, and I was a female entering into a male dominant industry. Now, let me just rewind this. And I'm sure a lot of you guys who just started pursuing photography right now will find it a little bit difficult to believe, but you can talk to many established photographers who can also agree to this point that come 2009, pre-2009, the available information and resources right now online were not non-existent uh, before 2009. Um, networking, being a newbie in the industry as well was completely, it was absolutely difficult. Um, so at that point I analyzed and I saw myself and I said, okay, my strong point is that I'm a, I got social skills. I like socializing. Um, the only thing I was very nervous and anxious was about was getting to know the technical part of photography, but with practice and time, it, um, it stuck on me. And using that method and also our social networks. So a quick uh, explanation of the segment of the market we are in. We photograph, TTL Photography photographs, high-end uh, Indian weddings in the Indian community of Durban and South Africa. And uh, the Muslim market in specific was really underestimated until I was, we had the opportunity of photographing five weddings where I saw the highlights of these weddings was fashion, glamour and confidence. And somehow there was not enough investment into photography. And the, the strong points when it came to Siraj and myself was, um, it was a male and a female team. And that was at our advantage uh, because uh, the Muslim weddings are split in, in half. We have the females one side and the males completely separate. And having a female photographer added to the confidence of, of the bride and the bridal couple and their families as well. So when I saw how these type of weddings were being done, it was the bride was dressed up, her makeup was done, her hair was done. And when I say that the taste in the style stood out uh, to the point of being influenced by Europe and what's going on in the Middle East, I thought my model is ready. The most I have to do is just pose her in the best way possible and, and portray her like she's, like she's in a fashion magazine. And that's the direction we headed towards. Um, so as you can see from our slides, it's completely different. Um, the, the portrayal of our, our, our brides are completely different to the norms of bridal portraiture. Yes, we do try to strike a balance with, with two. So coming to this point, coming to this stage in our lives took a lot of work, sacrifice, compromise, and also trying to understand myself. And well, it was also about Siraj understanding himself as well. Um, and how are we going to take our clients out of their comfort zones um, and, and pose in a bathtub with their dress, for example. So now, Looking at this quote, this was exactly what happened to me. And um, it's going to evolve. I'm going to tell you now, your business is going to evolve no matter where you are. And that's the other point about I want to talk about is success. And we get bombarded with the definitions of success. 
and success I, I, I actually don't like using that word often because it's a for me it, it comes across as being a limitation so success can is a gradual progression of your business so you can aim it has been your goal so my success from day one was getting school fees um, and beyond that was um, aiming for for example booking three big weddings for the weekend. And when I say big weddings, our segment of the market is not only the wedding day, but it's also pre-wedding functions because it's very culturally inclined. So when you get those kind of weddings that you get booked three days in advance, basically sometimes a whole week, bonus, that's my success. The other success as well can be for any individual, spending extra time with your kids, at least having one weekend free for the month. And the reason why I'm saying these things is because it's going to defer and it's going to be, it's going to be uh, personalized for you. And you're going to know later on why I emphasize on do you and everything that works around you. I also get uh, questioned by clients as to why my post-production takes longer than some photographers, why I don't give a sneak peek as compared to some photographers, and how come my T's and C's are different compared to other photographers. And there's nothing wrong with explaining these, these terms to your clients, and that's what I feel when you are a creative running a business. You're going to have to put a part of you in front because I swear by this, these words that you yourself are a walking advert for your business. And what I mean by that is that you are standing, the, uh, you are building your branding standards for your business. So how you are as an individual is going to say a lot about your business. And I'll go back to when I was expecting my third child. Um, I was. We were deep, very busy in the photography business, getting booked every weekend for weddings until it came to a point where I had to decide on my maternity leave. And yes, you must be wondering, you're working for yourself, how can you have a maternity leave? But those were the terms I gave myself because I needed to be fair, right? I worked myself right till the last month and I decided to take a three month maternity leave once I've given birth. But during those three months, I've gotten booked. But in the process of being booked, I made it clear to the client that during that time, um, it's during my maternity leave, do you mind having Siraz only at the wedding to, to photograph, to capture the day? Our clients did not mind at all. It went to such an extent that clients even um, uh, told me, come to the wedding, you don't need to work, bring the baby and come with you. We want you to be part of the wedding. Now, how do you reach that point? How do you reach that point of comfort and trust with your client? And this is about, my youngest now is eight, well, eight years ago. So you must be wondering, you have such, Fat's got such considerate clients. Well, my secret behind this is, whatever energy you give off, that's the energy you're going to attract. So if I respect my business first, I'm going to attract clients that's going to respect my business as well. And this is something that you need to, you need to keep on telling yourself, respect my business, but don't get me wrong. Initially in the first few years, you're going to be working and sacrificing every weekend. You're going to be pushing the limits. Late nights, yes, same story. It's, it's, this never happened overnight. To come to that point where I had clients being considered to my lifestyle and telling me, come to the wedding with your baby. We really don't mind, we want you to be there. It took a lot of time and energy to get to that point. And just note, no, I did not go to the wedding with my baby. <laughs> no, I, I respect my professional level. And I was very grateful that they understood it. And I was very grateful that they were making me a part of their special day. I really did appreciate it. But yes, this is what I want you to see, that you can reach that point in your business where you have that sort of comfort and professional zone with your client and they can be an amazing understanding with them, right? And again, this topic is vast. So if I do drift off topic, I'm completely sorry, but 
The only best example I can use to explain balance in business and creative is my own experience. And I'm sure many of you would be able to relate to this. And I want you to drop those comments and tell me um, how, how it is so relatable. Okay, so we go on to our next slide. And this is how I approached um, running a business. So we're going to, you need to sit down and identify a problem. And, and, and I've, now that I look at the slide and I see the word problem, um, it's uh, kind of limiting as well to use the word problem because sometimes it won't really be a problem. It's a bit of an obstacle that you need to work over or it's an uh, obstacle that you need to sandpaper down. So when you sandpaper, you smooth something down and also make it smaller in size. So when it's smaller in size, you'll be able to push it away. It'll still be there, but you can still work past it. So you need to identify these kind of obstacles and um, I'm not telling you guys to buy sandpaper, but like, yeah, you get what I'm saying. Um, so as, a, as you can see, I've listed a few. There's time management, there's being not profitable, there's creative blockage, there's imposter syndrome, which I'll talk about later because that's something that I've experienced as well. Understanding financials, come on, I hated accounting in school, but it's something now that I have to start implementing when it comes to running a business. But there's also a plan B if you don't enjoy financials. Stagnation, which is common, and we've, and we've seen this with so many businesses that they cannot expect explain or understand as to why they are not growing, right? Lack of fulfillment, which is very common with creatives. And yes, I go through it, we go through it and lack of support. So when you look at each of these, um, and this is just to list a few, as I said, it's going to, it's going to be different with each of you. It's going to, it's going to vary. And I'm just touching base with general um, problems. So for example, you decided to leave your corporate business, right? Uh, you decided to, to, yeah, to leave your corporate. I just want to get back onto that slide about identifying, uh, yeah, identify problems before we head off into management. Perfect. Okay. So I'm just giving a general example. You decided to leave your corporate business and uh, you want to pursue your free, a uh, freelancing life, become a, you want to pursue your passion or your creativity. And let's just say you started it while you were while you were at the corporate. And just remember something. Uh, working at a corporate, you are a, accountable to somebody, to your boss. And when you freelance, you become accountable to yourself because you become your own boss. And then at the same time, you are so fascinated with the free time that you're going to have as a freelancer that you actually overestimated uh, time. You thought 24 hours would be more than enough, but actually it's not. And that platter of responsibilities that you have because you are trying to juggle uh, life, business, creativity, and any, everything in between, everything in between uh, on a platter, and you thought you had great juggling skills. Unfortunately not. But the thing is, you want to pursue your freelance in life. How do you manage the disciplines of a normal job that's the question you've got to ask yourself and this is now going to get personal because it's going to rotate about around your life um, and this is now something that you have to analyze and you have to take into account like okay um, i don't have the resources for example your resources as a photographer could be gear let's take me as an example when we started in 2009 right till 2014 2014 was the year we decided to go go ahead and specialize well let's say 2015 specialize in high-end weddings and only weddings and wedding related events and at that point when I when I attended a workshop I learned about a one light setup and I also learned tech lighting techniques and where I was actually uh, just hanging on stagnation. And I was like, this is now, it was a light bulb, but a light bulb mo moment, realizing what's actually holding me back. And that was gear and resources. 
And my, my biggest concern was now I have to, after the workshop, now I need to go home and spend money on lighting equipment. When I was told that you can hire lights. So there are always solutions. There's always a plan B. If you have to at first hire your gear or hire your resources, then go ahead and do it. As long as you are getting the time to also manage um, your creative part and other parts of your business in other parts of your business into your time management, right? So I went ahead and started hiring uh, lights. It actually pushed my work up to another level. And that's when I broke the market and got, well, we classified our wedding photography as high fashion photography, right? So research guys, this has to do about researching yourself and understanding yourself as well. And um, Siraz has this excellent way of um, explaining to small businesses that the perception that you put out there about how you run your business needs to be up to a standard that whoever is viewing it doesn't need to know that you're running your business from home. So yes, we are intimidated about leaving the corporate world, going out there, finding office space, and we need to build up this whole image about our business without realizing that you are actually taking up extra onto your platter because you are infatuated with this, sorry to say, an ego of, I want it to look good. Right, I'm sorry, I'm a very honest person. Um, a lot of those who have worked with me will tell you that, and even with small businesses, I'm very honest and open about, about what I've experienced. And I, we're running our business for 11 years now out of our home. Uh, and you are actually looking at it right now. Um, my kitchen is right there and my lounge is right next to me. So I am as real um, as possible here. So we're going to look at certain factors. You're going to analyze and, and, and identify with, with what's stopping you from pursuing or pushing your business further. And as I said, it can be anything. It can even range from, besides your gear, besides the, your, your, your resources, it can be your personality. It can be the way you are branding yourself. It can be, um, as I said, with, with this, uh, a creative blockage. Now with creative blockage, for example, creative blockage um, happens. It does happen. I will vouch for that. It happens to me a lot. And you need to find a way that's going to work for you and how you're going to work around it. Accept it. And normally, how do you identify it firstly? It's a case of you not wanting to do any, anything that, that, that has to do with your work. So for photography, for example, if I uh, did an event that's from a Thursday to a Sunday, so there's pre-wedding functions, the wedding day, and then the photo shoot, you'll find me on a Monday, office is closed. Tuesday, I will gradually get into it. And by Wednesday, I'm going now into culling the images and going into my system because I allow myself to be so. I have that kind of attention span. And these are the things you have to look at. And you might be thinking, Fats, you're crazy. Why don't you outsource? I'm going to talk about outsourcing later and what it did to me and what I personally feel about outsourcing. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I worked according to me and what worked for me. Right. And then the other smaller problems, yes, it's just listing a few. Understanding financials, yeah, was one of them. I don't like accounting, but yeah. Um, but but it's it's good to work and understand and, and, and pay attention to this factor of your business because money is important. You're running a business, the reality is you need money. You can tell yourself how much that no, I'm not doing it for the money. But you do need money to live a lifestyle and to live life, right? Understanding financials as well is all about how far you can push your business, right? So we're going to move on. I'm going to pay attention to three, three points here. So it's going to be time management. It's going to be time management. It's going to be um, imposter syndrome 
and understanding financials. So time management. Everybody and anybody, whether you come from a corporate world or starting your own um, business, you have to learn how to manage time. At least with a corporate business, you are structured. So you have an eight to five job, and you know that after that five o'clock, you're not doing anything but spending time with family or whatever, go to the gym. And some people are so loyal that they'll actually carry work home to finish it. It just depends on their platter. But when you're running your own business, this, this plays a very important role on how to create some kind of structure and how to create um, um, a system in your life and how to manage all the important parts of your life. So for example, our time management changed as our business progressed. And it's very different compared to when the kids were much little, uh, little much little uh, compared to now because now I can say I have much more free time given their age they have extra activities from school that keeps them busy and they are a little bit more independent right as compared to them being much much little um, with this when you look at a photographer's uh, system we come home with work <laughs> after photographing a wedding and I am much involved in, my po in the post-production of our images. And you will find that um, because of this, I would know exactly how I'm going to structure the post-production part of, um, of the business. A lot of you might be outsourcing. That's fantastic. I, as I said, I'm going to go into that later. That's fantastic if you are outsourcing. If it works for you, I'm truly ecstatic for you. But with us in specific, it was a case of the kids are small. So what happens to my business is that the time that I spend on post-production is going to be sort of limited or extended. Meaning now at this point in 2020, I am delivering images within two to three months as compared to when my kids were little where I was um, delivering images by four to five months so can you see what i mean that time management is going to change as your as your business progresses and this is something you also need to understand and accept right has your pro has your business moves on as it gets bigger as the demand comes in has it um as it grows you're going to find there's going to be more work but if you grow it to be efficient, you're going to find you're going to have extra time. And this is the whole point about time management, growing your business to be efficient, right? And the next one, we're going to go on to imposter syndrome. Yes, I also had no idea that this term existed, but I was researching recently and I could relate to imposter syndrome. Uh, syndrome. And I know it sounds really scary but this is a feeling it's a psychological thing but it's a feeling of not being worth the skill or the job that you are trying to pursue right so related to me think about me guys i am a self-taught photographer i came into a i entered a male dominant industry at that time and now things have changed completely over the years and I was intimidated by not knowing the technical parts of my camera. And I kept on, re well, kept on reassuring me and telling me, practice makes perfect. Stop watching everybody else. Focus on yourself, right? And there's, this is a feeling. Again, I'm emphasizing it's a feeling, right? You might go through it, you might not go through it, but certain times in your career, you might just experience a bit of it. And what's the secret to this is you need to train yourself to self-motivate, right? You're going to, you, even if, if it goes to a point of you printing out a saying that, that motivates you or speaking to the person that motivates you or looking at images that motivate you that you were so thrilled with, with the image that you captured or a service that you're delivering or just going through clients, um, um, write-ups about you, positive write-ups about you. Just going through it to keep yourself uplifted, right? Um, so yeah, that was my obstacle 
imposter syndrome and till today it, ha it still does have a bit of effect because number one teaching wasn't wasn't my thing a lot of uh, clients used to ask me to teach photography and I'm like I'm not a teacher I can't teach you know when I see an image it's the way I've trained my eyes to see it I can't explain it to you so guys I'm with you on this I'm with you <laughs> through this whole journey I can relate to you guys about a lot of things right so I'm talking a lot please guys if you have any questions we will answer your questions shortly definitely shortly I just have one more slide and then we'll just cut uh, to the questions that are coming via Alpha Universe and on Instagram and we're going to move on to our next slide being understanding financials I'm just going to rewind on this yes it's very important as I've said there it's to plan or predict the future financial stability of the business and this is really important especially if you are a photographer because our most expensive resource is the gear the gear the lighting whatever um, so you're going to need to know where you stand in the next say two years whether you'll be able to afford it and even if you are paying for the gear now you're going to find a means of paying it off back into your business so this is also very important and this is a part of your business that you can outsource um, outsourcing it to a trusted accountant who will keep you on track as well because come on with lifestyle will do get carried away um, especially if you're running your own um, well trying to balance your own your books by yourself so if you have an accountant that's a way of just disciplining you and keeping you on track as to where you stand with your finances and where you can go about investing right and the other thing about finances which I do love is that I love using the word investing so uh, a lot of photographers we have we've come across or a lot of business owners and you find that business businesses now are moving to where the owners are, are buying cameras for themselves to use this for those quick impromptu moments to put it onto social media because it's all about social media but at the same time they're learning that the quality of the image is just as important Right? So they are attending our photography classes and at these classes we are making them understand that yes you'll have to spend money on a camera but don't look, it as, look at it as an expense. It's an investment into your business. Imagine you are running your business on social media and you have poor quality images. That is a misrepresentation of your business. For example, you have somebody who is selling clothing um, on social media and these images are taken with poor lighting, uh, probably with a cell phone, not a good quality image and it, it affects the colors of your garment and you post the image on social media and you have an online business so your client purchases the garment online and she's seen it on social on, on Instagram for example has been uh, teal and when she receives it it's actually either navy blue or sea green and she comes back to you and she says but this is not the color I wanted I wanted the color you had on Instagram so it can be detrimental to your business if your images are not portraying your actual product and that's why quality of images is just as important and this goes back to finances yes you need to make a budget for gear and thing and and resources that's going to carry your business uh, better onto these platforms right we're going to go into the questions I'm also going to be checking our Instagram um, hi guys uh, I'm thank you all for joining uh, really do appreciate but first let's check on the alpha universe okay so we're just going to check a question on the alpha universe which cameras and lenses do you use for your photo shoots okay my personal preference um, oh, when you grow in as a photographer you will learn and try to uh, train yourself to adjust to a lens and that's completely normal guys that's the other thing you need to know it's intimidating intimidating when you are becoming um, a photographer in the industry but I can tell you do not be intimidated by it work according to you right so my go-to lenses when it comes to photo shoots are primes I love my primes my 55 my Sony 55 mil Zeiss 
and my Sony 85 mm and I shoot with the A9 or the A9 Mark II. And the reason why I love my 55 mm prior is because my personality is I get bored easily. And I'm not an individual to stand in one spot and zoom in and zoom out and take an image. I like to move. I like to discover how the light is falling and onto the subjects and the different ways and scenery. And this actually, shooting with the prime forces you to move, forces you to see different angles of your subject. And this adds more to your flair, adds more to your style as well, instead of standing in one spot and zooming out. So those are my two main lenses. Well, salams, walaikum salam. Will you guys be coming to Joburg to do workshops? Inshallah, soon. It just depends on the lockdown that's happening right now in South Africa. Uh, but please do not let that, uh, do not let this limitation get to you. There's going to be a lot more online courses by Sony uh, that's going to be featured soon. We are also in the process of doing our um, uh, recorded webinars. There's a few recorded webinars that have been featured now on the Sony Alpha Universe. Go there and help yourself. And that's the other thing I wanted to tell you guys. Yes, we are so used to physically attending a workshop and, and participating. And you need to consider your guys uh, you, yourself lucky. Because when it came to my time and growing into uh, photography, there was a limited, there were limited resources when it came to online courses, and now there's there's a vast, a variety of courses available for you to stream online in the comfort of your home, guys. And that's the other thing as well. Don't let the situation limit you, because I've learned that the best way for a creator or a creative to pursue or push himself is to be in a limited circumstance, right? to be uh, restricted. And you're gonna learn so much about yourself. You're actually gonna push yourself out of your comfort zone to figure, oh wow, I actually do like macro photography, or I actually do enjoy this certain kind of photography or discovering time lapses with your, with your gear. So guys, there's ample, ample resources available. So stay tuned. Uh, so we're going to go quickly to the, Instagram live hi guys thank you so much for joining us uh, we really do appreciate it mm. oh, well done okay Insaf, thank you for your question how do you figure out what gear is necessary and which gear is nice to have but not really worth the investment at the time okay I'm gonna repeat that how do you guys, oh sorry, how do you figure out which gear is necessary and which gear is nice to have, but not really worth the investment at the time? Phew, this is a good one. Um, so I'm going to use myself as an example, as I'm always doing right now for the rest of the live, but um, for myself, I learned a lot about photography via my editing uh, because I was part of the, I'm always involved in the post-production and the editing of the images. And when I found that my editing was taking me too long and that I was wasting a lot of time on one image, I used to delete the image and go back to camera. And now this is not so much, I saw it in wedding photography as well, and obviously you can't delete the image if it's an important part of the event. But I learned, I made a note, uh, this kind of settings in this certain circumstance did not work. And I moved back. I moved backwards into my gear and I, and I tried to figure out how exactly can I make this better with the type of resources I have right now. So once upon a time, we never used to photograph with strobes. We used to use our flashes, which is the speed lights. And as we uh, expanded our knowledge when it came to lighting situations, we decided to take that step and invest in, speed, in uh, strobes. And our first step wasn't buying strobes, it was going and hiring those strobes, right? And we hired those strobes and we found a massive difference in the quality of the images that we're given. 
So the main point that we make all the time is whatever gear you have right now, push your gear. Push it to the point to see how far you can, you can take it, where your limitations lay and, and work with those limitations. Because understand when you start in your business, finances is an issue. We were in that situation as well. And we worked with the resources and the gear that we had until we were able to save and invest that money into better gear. So don't stop yourself from, uh, from photographing or understanding um, your skill with what you have now. Have you pushed your gear to its limit? You need to ask yourself that before, before you go on spending more. And once you've reached that point of satisfaction that, okay, my gear is limiting me, I need to invest into something bigger, well, better, then go ahead and do it. I hope that answers your question. Charlene Bial, hi there. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Fatima, I can relate to the imposter syndrome. Thank you very much for sharing. Oh, Charlene, um, self-motivation girl. That's the only way you can push yourself um, and don't let it get to you. You're going to have those moments, but there's one thing I've also learned as well is to acknowledge it. Acknowledge it. If it gets you down for a day, go with it. Sit with a box of popcorn in your PJs, watch Netflix throughout the day. Just ignore your, your, your business number and the emails that are coming through. You can, being a freelancer, you are able to, you are able to work according to you. It's, it's okay to have a migraine and explain you don't have a boss to answer to. So accept it and just go ahead, but don't let it pull you down whatsoever. Pick up, right? Right, we're just gonna round this up with a simple saying and I, I, all the businesses I've dealt with, um, I've told them this, do you. It's intimidating guys, we are humans. We are bombarded with social media. Do this for Instagram, get your algor algorithms right. Do, do, do this kind of layout and, 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 um, and structure for your Facebook, for your website. What's the competitor doing? What's the competitor up to? It's everywhere. It's crazy. And it's intimidating to the point where you actually sit back and you tell yourself, you know what, this is not for me. Don't do that to yourself, don't. And, a way I, and the way I go about doing that is, I, at this time where I do cut myself off social media for a day or two, because I find that it's distracting. And that's the other thing, when you look at time management, you need to keep the things that are distracting you away from you. Make the space just for you. So when you do spend time doing a task, you are giving it all, and you are completing it for the time frame that you have given it, right? There's a very um, interesting, uh, what do you call it, a podcast or a live that, um, yeah, a podcast or a live that I saw on Facebook. I don't know, I'm not sure if you guys follow Gary V. And Gary V was interviewed by a radio, a radio DJ. Um, and this radio DJ, DJ is also a trainee. So he has a gym and at the gym he has a lot of... Um, entrepreneurs come in there and training and he finds that a lot of them lack sleep and when this question was um, asked to Gary V about you know pursuing your dreams and your ambitions you have to lose sleep is that true and Gary V looked confused and said but I had eight hours of sleep before I could come for this interview and when he goes on to explain as to why up-and-coming entrepreneurs, small businesses are lacking on the sleep is because during the time that you are awake, you need to see on what you are wasting time on because we are easily distracted. We are easily distracted by social media, by, by what our competitor is up to, by little things. For example, sitting on YouTube sitting on YouTube and watching something about photography can lead to watching dogs jumping over fences. Come on. And then it's gone three hours of just watching uh, YouTube. So you need to put the leash on yourself and restrict yourself from certain things that you know that's going to dis distract you. Right, just, I just wanna, go. our Instagram uh, live is buzzing. So photography by Lala. Nala, 
Thank you so much for joining. How does one find your niche, your niche in photography? Again, Nala, this is going to be about discovering yourself. Um, I knew from the start that I was a photography, uh, I was a photographer, a people's photographer. I loved events, I love social gatherings. So from day one, I knew where I was heading. But for those that I've had a lot of requests at weddings where uh, enthusiastic photographers will see the whole hype about wedding photography and yes it's fantastic money if you market yourself and price yourself correctly um, they will ask me um, what does it become what do you need to do to become a wedding photographer and my first question to them is well this is my own analysis of the individual being in the industry for 11 years you can easily read body language and you can also pick up on energies and my first question to her was, are you a people's person? And her, question, her reply to me was, no, not really. So I'm like, don't get me wrong, but you can be a people's person in many ways. You can be a people's person where you can adapt to a, to a guest list or come into an event that has a thousand guests on it. You can be a people's person by even photographing smaller events or even taking it right down to portraiture where you just it's just you and the model right and she never looked at it in that way she was she was fascinated with the whole glam and the money behind it right so when i when i approached her question in this manner it actually made her think about herself and i'm don't get me wrong if you feel that you are now, right now, not a people's person, running a business, you have to be a people's person to a certain extent. Depends how far you want to take it, right? But in photography, you can start slowly because eventually this is also an obstacle that you can overcome. You can overcome it by starting with portraiture and then moving on slowly into smaller events and see how far you can push yourself. And then just take it from there. And as I said earlier, do you guys, just do you, work according to you. And that's where I found my niche. I've, we found our niche where I love the glamour. Uh, I love detail. I was all about detail. Um, and for me, there's nothing better than printing your images. And the type of weddings that we photograph to print those images is just amazing. It plays with the senses. And this is what I feel photography should be about, playing with the senses from the eyes well we can incorporate a perfume scent there to work with it but from the eyes to actually feeling the the pages of the album that it's that it's it's sentimental and of, of a very high quality product so this is a discovery process Nala you're going to discover a lot about yourself as you go on um, uh, pushing your business and getting on there and don't get me wrong we photographed every kind of function besides baby baby photography uh, I did it once and unfortunately it just wasn't for me but other than that we did everything from corporates to uh, anniversary shoots to simple photograph um, photo shoots so discover yourself and push yourself further and it's going to take time and give yourself that time so there's solutions and these are our suggested solutions and I'm I'll be absolutely ecstatic if this helps you guys in one way or another but yes, these are the few that I swore by <laughs> and they are create and maintain a routine. I had to school going kids, um, their lifestyle, my lifestyle, maintaining a structure. And it can be small things, guys. It can be to a point where you can start waking up an hour earlier in the day. Right. Uh, you are restricted now to this lockdown. So how about Taking a bubble bath, but listening to a podcast about uh, motivating uh, business owners. That's my newest thing right now is that I am addicted to podcasts by entrepreneurs and especially those that are, that, that are in, the, um, in the US because they are coming with, with the most amazing ideas during this lockdown. And I can't emphasize any more about that, but seriously, it's amazing. You guys need to give it, give it a chance. Uh, yeah. So your office time is a must, and this is what I, I all, always stick by. That office time is a structure to keep you disciplined as well. So I have two different types of uh, office times. Uh, during the weekdays, it's a 
9 to 12. And it, when it changed, because it works around my kids' schooling uh, schedule as well. So I have a 9 to 12, now I have a 9 to 12. And then I have a 2 to 4 or half past 4. And afterwards, after 5 o'clock, my business number is on silent. And these uh, are the hours that I pay attention to anything that has to do with the business. So it's admin, firstly. And somebody asked me about taking control of admin. Yes. Admin is in your control and do not underestimate the power that admin has on the brand of your business because your communication with your client or potential client starts from the time you respond to that email. So do remember that you, you must try not to sound robotic or systematic when it comes to responding to your emails. And this is something I pay a lot of attention to because every email is different and every two persons are not the same. So I actually personalize each email to a client when it comes to their inquiries. And for me, it's been a winner because you are actually given a human part to the business and you are starting it from that communication until you have confirmed the meeting, until you have confirmed the deposit, right? So office times, yes, stick by it. And when you start respecting your office times, you're gonna get clients that respect it have those office times scheduled and um, uh, what's that word um, an automatic reply that's it automatic reply via your email now whatsapp has become a business whatsapp as well where you can send an instant reply as to how they can communicate with you especially if you're narrowing, narrow, narrowing down your uh, communication platforms. So my main platform is emails. And if I get an inquiry via WhatsApp, the automatic reply, uh, reply uh, replies and also states as to where they can get hold of us when it comes to any photography requests, right? And schedule your work and lifestyle. And yes, you can have a lifestyle. You can take a break and do your yoga stretches or have a coffee or just go to the hairdresser. You get what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's up to you guys, it's not limited. I might look like I got everything in order, but I do have my days where things do scramble. But the nice thing about it is that when you structure it according to you, you can also be flexible. And we get up in the mornings feeling miserable. So maybe our office time will move to the afternoon. Just communicate that with your clients or whoever you needed to communicate with on that day, right? And then we have create a system. Now create a system can make your life or your day or the running of your day much more smoother, right? And part of this is utilizing apps. So you have apps that can help you to remind you about appointments. You can have apps that help you to post onto social media. You can have, it's the resources there is amazing. There's ample, there's enough, right? There's no excuse not to use it. It's just making you uh, be on track with what you have scheduled for the day. I am a little bit old school. I still write in a diary. I love writing in a diary. And for me, that's my to-do list. So what happens today that I need to schedule for the next day or the next week, I write it all down in my diary and I love it and it works for me. You might be a more tech, uh, tech um, inclined individual. Go ahead and put it into your into your apps or your schedule app that will help to remind you or send off an alarm just to remind you. Uh, outsourcing. My personal journey about outsourcing is my photography business is, is still my baby and I was very overprotective especially when it came to post-production. As I said that I'm 100% uh, involved in the post-production and albums and admin and stuff of the business. So when it came to a point where I felt I was truly overwhelmed, and this is when we also became uh, Sony ambassadors, because onto our platter came the workshops and the educating part of our business. And that also includes a lot of admin. And I found that I was actually wasting time on images that were easy to do. You know, if you do edit on Lightroom, you would know the sync. Uh, the sync feature where you just edit one image and you sync it and I found you know what this half an hour being spent can be placed into something else I can invest it into another task so why don't I think about outsourcing the images that are actually sorry to say wasting my time or I can push it aside for somebody else who I trust can do it and I can use that time 
the 30 minutes or 45 minutes and invest it into something else, another part of the business. That's one part of outsourcing when it comes to a photographer. Outsourcing can be also your graphic designer when it comes to your website, right? The nice thing also about outsourcing is that you must be able to work very closely with the person that you are outsourcing so they understand a part of your business and where you are coming from. And if you, that if that outsourcing company does not allow you to have that part, then, then trust me, move on to the next outsourcing option, right? Because if a company is able to give you the space and freedom just to listen to where you are coming from and why you deciding to outsource, then they're going to know exactly how to, how to um, do your work or run your schedule as well. So outsourcing is not a bad thing. And even outsourcing to an accountant who will keep you structured and keep you disciplined with your money, right? Set small goals. I love this. Setting small goals, I found, helped me especially when I found there was a lot happening with growing kids being in high school, the day schedule as well was piling on and I needed to be more of a mother presence at their school and activities. So I found that, okay, now it's going to change. And let me tell you, this has started happening two years ago into our business where I decided that I need to look at my post-production process and I need to cull it in such a way that I set small goals that will keep me motivated. And this is what I found. That for example, if you look at our weddings, our weddings are broken down into the getting ready session, the photo shoot, the reception, and if there's a post wedding shoot as well, then that will happen. And then what I decided to do is that in Lightroom, I started culling each and rating each of these events at different stars, right? At different stars. And then if I rated number one, uh, for getting ready, number two for the shoot and number three for the, fam for the wedding reception. I aimed at editing each star um, for, for the time allocated for editing. And I found that worked much more faster because it's a psychological thing that if you set these goals, you're going to keep yourself inspired and motivated and you'll be like, oh yay, Fanta instead of seeing 600 images that you need to edit, and you're like, oh my God, where do I start with this? So don't do that to yourself. Set small goals. If your goal for the day is I need to achieve um, answering all of the emails by today and also updating my website and you're able to do that for the day, fantastic, you got a goal. Set weekly goals. It doesn't need to be, I need to set a yearly goal. Yes, you can. But just to grow your confidence and just to grow the fact that you have everything in control, go for it. Set these small goals. Right, and it pumps, as I said there, it pumps up the motivation. Um, take breaks and unplug. So for the mothers out there or parents out there who can relate to this, um, it was something that I overlooked growing up, becoming a mother, until a lot of close family friends uh, suggested this to me. And they said, you know what, it doesn't mean you need to go and book at a spa. It means simple things. Take a walk. Go to the hairdresser, visit a friend, go for coffee, or just put all of your phones off and disconnect or unplug from uh, social media and just take the time for yourself. And that's exactly what you need to do for yourself, right? And there's nothing wrong with it. Don't feel guilty. Don't ever feel guilty that you are delaying that email by an hour, right? You can you can come back to it, it's always going to be there. But your self-health and your mental health is just as important and it's something that's needed. It's the biggest resource that you need for your business. You need, your business needs your attention and your dedication. And the last thing it needs is someone who's burnt out and does not find any fulfillment in running this business or doesn't find any confidence. Don't do that to yourself. Take a break, guys. Okay, we're going to move on to utilizing technology and being a self-taught photographer, it was all about the gear, right? And we learned this over the years um, as our business grows, that we needed to make a decision that uh, made our workflow much more efficient because from just photographing weddings and delivering images, it moved from photographing weddings, editing those images, putting it onto a gallery so the clients have the privilege of choosing the images for their album, 
uh, then designing the album, uh, working with the client to see if the album is, are they happy with it, if, is it approved? And once it's approved, sent to the printers and also then working with the printers, right? And can you see the relationship in that process? So we had to do and pinpoint the areas that can make our work move on faster. And number one for photographers is obviously your gear and utilizing technology around you. And learning to utilize technology around you is going to help you save that time and also manage that time. And manage that time so you can spend more on going onto the marketing part of your business, right? So the confidence, number one, just falls uh, when it comes to a photographer is their gear, right? And, and an artist and their tools, no matter what's your, what's your profession, it's your tools. If you are uh, a skincare company uh, that's running from home or a makeup company running from home, you are going to utilize your social media platforms. You are going to utilize even a camera, buying a camera and learning how to take good quality images to showcase your products on the social media platforms. So don't, don't let it come across as, oh, you're a photographer, shame, you gotta pay over 100K for your, for your gear. No, they, depending on your business and how you look at it, you're gonna need these tools to help push your f uh, business further. Because remember, you're still in competition with, every, with, you, with your fellow competitors in your industry and you want to stand out. You want your brand to stand out, right? And efficiency. So efficiency is our goal when it comes to running a business and Siraj is gonna go through that. Uh, he's gonna emphasize more and go into detail about efficiency and why we invested a lot into our gear and uh, why choosing the right gear plays a very vital part in your business. Hi there guys, um, before I begin I just want to uh, sh give a shout out to my wife who's doing a brilliant job. Um, we never expected uh, and thank you guys as well for the, um, for the feedback that we've been getting. Instagram is going crazy, we've got questions um, that we will be answering. Alex Worth, um, just to answer your question, uh, we are shooting this on an A7R 3 with a 55mm Zeiss lens. So. My contribution to this talk is a little bit of history um, about TTL and Sony. I have been doing photography since 2003. I was in assign on assignment in Germany and I had an opportunity to, um, to buy a camera and I bought myself a Minolta Maxim 5 camera. Um, that was a 35mm film camera, that's how old I am. Um, and I started with that, I knew nothing about photography. So what I did was I bought a couple of rolls of film, left the, uh, the camera in, in auto, and I went crazy. Well, as, 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 as much as you could with film at that time because you only had 36 exposures per roll. So um, for, for a long time, I never had, um, I never took my camera off auto. So what happened was back in the, in the day, um, like Fatima mentioned earlier, there was no YouTube. You either, you either, um, one, one of your best ways to get into photography, to learn photography is to, was to get a book somewhere or if you knew a photographer, um, he would then, you would then sit with that photographer and they would teach you. And uh, I, I don't like reading um, and I didn't know a lot of photographers at that point in time. I then went on assignment to Canada and uh, again, I bought another camera and upgraded to the Minolta 7, which was one, at that point the most advanced uh, film camera uh, at the time. And when I got back from Canada, a colleague of mine or someone had started working at Shell, I was working at Shell at the time, and this person was a professional photographer. And we sat and um, we, he started giving me tips and tricks. And gradually I learned uh, the basics of photography. Um, I think a lot of people are, are nowadays still overwhelmed with a lot of the technicalities, but trust me, if you learn the basics and just work and master the basics, you've got 90% of the job done. And when I say the basics, I'm, I'm not only referring to uh, aperture and shutter speed and, and so forth. Those are the technical aspects of photography. 
The basics that I'm referring to is uh, basics of composition, of lighting, uh, of, of learning how to play with light and shadow. Technicalities can be learned afterwards. It's, 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 trust me, it's easy to pick up technicalities. Um, but you need to train your eye to see how the light is falling. You need to train your eye to see when you walk into a room, you should be able to immediately think, okay, you know what, I can't use my 55 mil here, I need to use my 60 to 35, for example, because of, of space constraints and so forth. But that is where we come from, and, 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 and that's how I learned, and that's what, what, what basically, uh, the basics that, that I uh, taught Fatima as well. So, for us, when it comes to our gear, bef well, firstly, because I had Minolta, when we did our first wedding, um, I decided that we need to go digital. I wasn't going to shoot a wedding on, on film. Um, and the logical step for me was to upgrade to Sony because Sony bought Minolta's digital uh, division and um, all my lenses would then fit on the Sony camera. At that point, it was a logical uh, step for us. Uh, what we didn't know at that time was just how good a step that would be. And um, now, when we when we look at our gear selection, a few of the things that we that we considered or the criteria that we used was uh, excellent image quality, uh, reliability, um, ease of use, and. Um, there, there were a couple of other minor uh, things in terms of uh, lens selection and so forth. Our current setup is uh, we, we're shooting this, this live on a Sony a7R 3 which is a, seven, a 42 megapixel camera, one of, one of the best cameras that I've ever used. If ever you want, um, looking for a camera that, that's, um, that'll give you good resolution, this is a good place to start. It has been superseded by the A7R4, which now gives you 61 megapixels of, of, uh, of resolution. Um, that A7R4, just to put it into perspective, the A7R4 will give you similar quality to medium format. It won't give you the same look and feel, but it'll give you similar quality to medium format. And that says a lot coming from, uh, if you compare um, full frame to medium format. Uh, like I said, A7R3, for the video with a 55 mm Zeiss lens. That 55 mm Zeiss lens is absolutely amazing. It's one of the sharpest lenses ever. Uh, and the nice thing about that lens is it was released with the original A7, uh, I think it was about seven years ago. This lens has been made or manufactured to resolve up to 120 megapixels. So a lens that's seven years old, you can fit onto your A7R4 now, which is 61 megapixels, and you know for a fact that lens will resolve 61 megapixels of your sensor. That's one thing that a lot of people don't seem to realize is, um, I love using older lenses. Um, I love the, 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 the look and the feel of the images it gives you. But some of those older lenses will not be able to resolve the full resolution of your sensor. So if you want to do that, you make sure that you get native lenses. Um, it's always it's always a good idea because native lenses will always give you the best images and will always you'll get full functionality of those lenses. The camera I have in my hand is the original A9. This is Fatima's, oh well, this was Fatima's favorite camera until she got the, A, the A9 II. This is a 24 megapixel sensor um, with a uh, coupled to a 16 to 35 G Master lens. This camera, in terms of speed, a lot of, this camera firstly, let me, let me just put it into perspective again. This camera was made for sports photographers. Uh, you might ask why, a, um, why wedding photographers would want to use a camera that's meant for sports photographers. The autofocus on this camera is beyond amazing. It is, for, there, there, there are times when it feels like this, the autofocus is telepathic. If you couple the speed of the autofocus of the camera with the eye autofocus system built into these cameras, you will nail most of your shots. You know, there, 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 are, there are times at weddings where Fatima would be doing um, family portraits and I would shoot the candid behind the scenes shots of people greeting the couple and so forth. And I would activate eye autofocus. And as long as there's even just a part of the eye of the bride's eye that's in the frame, the camera would still focus on it. 
There are images. If you guys don't believe me, you guys can send us DMs, contact us. I'm, I'm glad to share those images with you. But if we look at, at the setup that we have, we've got speed out of the A9 with good image quality, brilliant image quality, if I might say so. Um, the A7R 3 gives you 42 megapixels. If, you, if you're looking for something more, you get the A7R 4 which will give you 61 megapixels. These are things that, that we considered. What do we need to take our business to the next level? And I'm not saying that gear takes your business to the next level, but gear forms part of your plan. It should form part of your plan. So when it came, when it come, came to, to, to us purchasing cameras, there was no doubt these are the cameras that, that we went for. Um, and it, it's, it's been absolutely amazing. We've had photographer friends who, uh, who were interested in moving over to mirrorless. Oh, by the way, we were early adopters to the, the Sony mirrorless system. Uh, we still have the original A7, which is still a very good camera. Uh, we've got the A7 Mark II, which is a step up on the A7 in, in certain aspects, which up until today, people still speak about that camera. So we've seen the progress that Sony has made and it's mind blowing uh, what can be done with, uh, with the technology that, 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 that we currently have. Now, one, one of the criteria, big criteria for our gear selection was how would it improve our workflow? As, as photographers, especially if, you, if you're running as a business, an efficient workflow is one of your, should be one of your top priorities. And because of the features of, the, of, the, of these, uh, these cameras, um, it's fast, reliable autofocus, consistently reliable autofocus. Up until today, I'm, we've been using the, the kit for a while now, and up until today, there are times when I'm blown away by the shots that I am able to get from this. Um, I autofocus, uh, people have thrown at me that it's a lazy way of shooting. It's not a lazy way of shooting. I know if I active an eye to focus, I don't have to worry about my focus. I can concentrate on my composition and on, 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 on other aspects of photography. So it's not a lazy way of, 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 of shooting. You just need to utilize uh, the tech properly. Um, so you look at dynamic range, for example, you get 14 stops of dynamic range from, from these cameras across the board. 14 stops. That, that That's brilliant because the amount of detail that you can recover from your shadows is absolutely mind-blowing. So all of these factors uh, were taken into consideration when we, when we made the, 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 the purchases and it tied in nicely with an efficient workflow. Our motto when it comes to photography is always get the shot right in camera. If you get the shot right in camera or as close to possible in camera, your editing time is cut down. And they, again, by getting it right in camera, you are streamlining and making your workflow a bit more efficient. So these are things that you need to consider. These are things you need to look at. Um, and, and a lot of times, these are things that you shouldn't be considering in isolation. Oh, I like that because of that, but it doesn't, it doesn't fit in with any of your other plans. You should look at, at, at your, your strategy and your workflow holistically and see, you know what, like Fatima always mentions, um, uh, you need to work according to you. If this is the lifestyle I want, then that's how much time I'm allocating to editing, for example. So if that's the time I'm allocating to editing, how do I get it so that that is the time that, I've, that I'm editing and I don't spend more time than I really want to? So Fatima again mentioned that it, it, it'll be different for different people. This is what's working for us. If it works for you, then we're happy. It might not work for you, but you might be able to tweak some of these suggestions. And this is coming from, from over 11 years of experience. So, you know, we've been there, we've been through the struggles, we've knocked our heads, uh, we've, we've, purchased, we've purchased equipment that we never use because firstly, we thought, no, we would need it. And secondly, uh, we just wanted to buy things. So we've, we've been through all of those things and we've gotten to the point now where every decision we make in terms of our business comes back to how will it affect our business? Will it, will it make for a more efficient uh, workflow or will it make for a less efficient workflow? Will it cut into our lifestyle that we want to lead? So these are all factors that you guys need to consider. And then, um, I'm just thinking of, of, of all the, the other lenses that we have before I forget. We've got the 
70-200 G Master lens for portraits. We're sitting with the 16-35 G Master. Uh, I personally love the 16-35 because I like getting into the action and I feel that that little bit of distortion um, tells the story and it creates depth in the images and so forth. Now, I, I know this might not be business talk, but I'm more a technical person. My wife is the marketing and business person. I think you, you guys figured that out already. But these are just, again, the things that we considered. What is the style of shooting that, that, that you love? If you love doing portraiture, what are the lenses that you need? So for example, you wouldn't go and buy a 12mm lens if you love portraiture, but you bought the lens because someone said, no, it's a good lens. So a lot of times, you, well, not a lot of times, what you should be doing when it comes to your gear selection is do your homework. What do I need to shoot portraits? What are the focal lengths? Uh, one good tip um, that I have is, especially when it comes to portraits, for example, um, everyone tells you you need a long lens for portraits. Uh, you look at Sony, Sony's 24mm G Master lens, for example. It's a wide angle lens. We've started shooting portraits with that lens as well. So there are rules that, that do apply under certain circumstances when it comes to photography, but don't be afraid to break those rules or bend those rules. But again, before you break or bend them, think about how it's going to affect your workflow and how it's going to affect your business. Oh, that was informative. And you thought I talk a lot, but... <laughs> Anyway, yes, so he is the main uh, source of, oh, what can I say? He was my main teacher when he came to photography. And uh, my approach as well was really different compared to his because I was a little bit more hands-on as compared to, as he mentioned, reading from a book. Um, and just having experience and just to give you a heads up, Siraz taught me to learn uh, photography straight onto aperture mode no auto mode, nothing to make you lazy, but to understand the camera system itself. And then he pushed me straight onto aperture mode and it was just about, say about five, six years ago, we started shooting on manual. So we're gonna move on onto my side of stuff, but before I do this, are there any questions related to gear? We're just gonna go through this. So Siraj covered the models, the, the camera models that we are photographing. Okay, Bernard. Hi Bernard, thank you so much for joining us and I'm so sorry we took so long to get to your question, but here goes. Why did you decide to make your business model to target high-end weddings? Does this mean that they, the couples, will approach you because they already have a certain budget and what happens if someone who approached you with a lesser budget, but they really wanted you to be their wedding photographer? How do you hand such situation? A beautiful question. Thank you so much for that. It all starts with your marketing, Bernard. It starts with the way you put yourself across. And the last thing I want to portray myself as is being egotistical with the way I photograph or how I am as a photographer. But when you put yourself across, um, especially has a brand in a certain segment of the market then those like minds are going to be attracted to you and i've had those inquiries who um, who were limited with their budgets and the one thing i really appreciate as a business owner and as a photographer is when the client is able to be open with me and tell me unfortunately i don't have that budget but what happens with this communication, this is a little secret I want to let um, share with you guys, is that you need to win the trust, whether they book you or not. So as I've mentioned before in your admin, that your relationship with your client starts from the time you respond to the emails. And this is where it starts. You have no idea whether they're going to book you. The fact that they are inquiring, it's one of two things. They want to see whether you're within their budget or they want to book you if you are available that's the next thing but when it comes to the point where they can see that you are sitting way out of their budget the manner and the approach that you do in your email communicating to them about your about your photography packages automatically i found that they confided in me about their, their plans and what i 
what I do in that circumstance is that I actually become more of an event coordinator. I actually advise them and talk to them and such suggest to them other photographers who are potentially available or who will fit their needs one way or another, right? And this is relationship and customer relationship that you need to maintain because the impact that you will have on that one inquiry, she can go to a friend who's looking for a photographer. Maybe the friend has a budget, but the conversation can turn to a point where she can tell her friend, you know what? I had so-and-so at my wedding. You saw my images, they were beautiful. But also try TTL photography because she helped me with the whole planning and she gave me such great advice. Now that kind of impact, you need to leave that lasting impression. So this is our strategy that we play on experiences. Whether they book you or not, you leave, a good, leave them in a good experience with your service. Admin is a service. It might not be a solid product, but it's a service. And if you can impress your client from that point, whether they book you or not, they still trust in you. Because in any event where they need photography done, they're going to contact you first, right? So it's that kind of approach, not to, not to be, you know, you try to prevent, everybody lives in different, uh, different lifestyles and different circumstances. And you, as humans, you need to be compassionate about it and also be understanding and considerate towards it. So already our branding might portray high-end, classy, expensive, big budget weddings. So those brides that are wanting, they will inquire. I got no problem with that. But it has, my price list is my price list. And if they come on further to ask, I wish I had the budget for you, I take it on further to carry on with the communication of how else other than photography can I help you plan your wedding. Simple. Just be human. Just be a person. That's it. Can we go on to our next question? Instagram, I'm going to check on you. I haven't forgotten about you guys, but yeah, we're going to check on you. Spectrography. Okay. Advice to get more customers struggle, quota people low price for their budget still struggle okay so um when i it, it's similar to bernard's question but the question is all about budget and when clients come with a budget and what i do is when a client is honest to me about a budget i completely um appreciate their honesty and before i go on how's the sound guys is the sound good instagram will be different I just want to double check with everybody else. Perfect. So um, if they are open, open to me about their budget, it's one of two things. I can work a package according to their budget. It might not meet their expectations or it might just meet their expectations. Uh, but that's one of two things. It's either I can work according to their budget or we we help to direct you or help you get a photographer that fits within your budget. As I said, it's customer service and just helping them uh, plan the event. Memories, guys, it's all about the memories as well. Okay, so we're going to move on to our slides and we're almost done with it. And now it's time to be real. So those who have collided with me or uh, met with me or attended our workshops or even those that I've been helping uh, even if it's via Instagram or face to face, know that I can be blatantly honest when it comes to when it comes to running a business, because for me, that being honest is the best way I can be as a mentor or has a uh, source of motivation. Right. So warning, it's time to be real. Firstly, your mindset shift. You need to readjust your mindset, sh mi mindset, mindset when it comes to running a business. Sorry about that. So firstly, stop your doubts about yourself. And this is something I've been through as well. Stop your doubts, push them aside. They'll always be there. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes doubts is good in a way because it pushes you to a certain point. It actually takes you out of your comfort zone. And it's not, and the, the only way to find out is to try it, right? 
and if you fail it's one of those things if if, if it's a success there's another way of, of going ahead but remember something when you when you fail or uh, retrieve results that's not to your satisfaction just learn from it and push yourself on right so just push yourself on and then um, I have a very interesting quote on that slide and I say when you shift your perspective when you suddenly the life you are living changes I came I was coming from a mummy of two kids with two kids being at home well you can say domesticated but being at home I had to change that whole guilt of leaving my kids by my mum or my brother or family friends whoever was there supporting me I had to change that guilt it took me some time and a few years to move away from that and come to a point where I am doing this for them and they are also learning and adjusting and and today I can see um, uh, what a change it has been it has actually been for the good got no regrets and it was just about me giving myself a chance and also changing my thinking uh, with a few a few aspects of the business so compromise and sacrifice this is something that we found with a lot of small businesses that we've worked with and when I say worked with I mean we were part of their marketing uh, plans and strategy where we got involved in photographing their business um, for doing their profile pics and also photographing their products and we found that they were in the business for about two years and really underestimated the amount of sacrifice and compromise they'll have to make so for example a food store a food stand that uh, will only run over the weekends because the husband and wife have a full-time job during the week they never um, well they could they they didn't see how much of sacrifice will go to weekends being sacrificed public holidays being sacrificed in those first few years or months of running a business and this is going to be normal if you're starting out your first few years is going to be about sacrificing holidays public holidays grabbing whatever opportunity as possible and this was Siraj and myself for the first five to six years of our business every opportunity came even if it was charity work to photograph we did it it was sacrificing time with our family and even leisure time but we did it for the practice and for getting used to and having the experience and this is what helped us to now decide exactly where we want to lead the business and grow it and into which genre and where do we want to spend more time right so keep an eye on the ego I know creativity has a lot to do with it being your baby I completely understand I've been there I've I've been there and I'm still there and you are overprotective about what you create and how you go about creating it and it has worked for you and you just can't tolerate the A, B, C's and D's that come across from other individuals and you just don't see it because you've created this and let me tell you something that it can become damaging if you don't know how to manage it right you must understand that a fellow creative in your segment of the market and in your industry uh, and even if it's somebody you trusted or somebody you haven't trusted puts a we'll say critic critic or adds to criticism to your business you're going to be hurt initially right but this is how I trained myself or how we trained ourselves to um, implementing these criticisms into our business. So when we started uh, printing our work, um, I would say this individual has been the main five individuals who have always supported and encouraged, encouraged us in this industry. And he owns the printing lab. And I was at that point where I was so thrilled about the images I was creating and also when it was being printed, I was like, wow, I love it. Until I showed him an image that I was so proud about and I asked him for his perspective and his uh, comments because he's been in the photographic world for like over 25 years. And he told me straight that that image is crap. I'm sorry for my language, but that was his honest opinion. And he told me, if you're feeling bad, it's normal, accept it. But I'm telling you from my own eyes, what I've seen for the past 25 years, this is bad. You can do better. 
and I went home and I tried to absorb that and I'm saying it live to everybody to hear but yes it still sticks with me because that was my turning point when we looked at the image and he and it was a simple thing he has Fatima take the image and put it onto your TV screen and you tell me if the quality of that image is good enough to give to a client and it was already printed in an album and I could see exactly what he was talking about and from that day his advice has been golden and it has played a major part he is one of five individuals who I can pinpoint that have stood out in the progress of our business and taking that advice, it, could, it shattered me for a day. And he told me, be prepared to be shattered because I'm being honest. I want you to get better. And these were his words. I want you to get better. But the only way you can get better is to better, firstly, your skill. And secondly, invest into your equipment. So it was our camera gear and also editing on a 21 inch, I mean, doing bigger onto a 20, 27 inch lens. So I was editing on a 21 inch inch uh, Mac uh, uh, screen and then I had to invest into a 27 inch yes invest remember those are the important words so at that point my ego got a shadow but he was when I took his crit critique and I invested it in the business I could see exactly where we were heading and exactly what he was trying to tell me until today I treasure his advice um, and whatever he has to tell me till this point, even 11 years later, he is somebody that we will consult. And these are the kind of individuals you need to keep close by to you. And another thing about ego as well is, as I said earlier, you're going to be so infatuated with this whole thing of I'm starting a business. I need to be in a fancy building. I need to have this kind of perception. You know what? Then people will take me seriously. No. Look at the situation we're in right now. It is so uncertain. We have no idea where our businesses are going to be heading towards for the rest of the year, even until 2021. Wedding photography for sure and wedding videography, anything to do with weddings is going to take a major knock for the next couple of months. Because just like the bridal couples, we are just as uncertain as to where we are going. Right? So now you need to decide if you have entered into a, a lease you need to rethink your decisions because you need to have income to carry you for the next couple of months or some kind of cash to carry you in that lease. And this is what I'm saying by impulse of decisions that we get so carried away with this, this fantasized image of how our business should look that we are not looking into reality. We are not looking at the real picture. And I'm sorry for being so honest, but as I've told you guys, for 11 years, I ran my business from my home. I've ran it from my home. I have my meetings in the most fanciest coffee shops. And there's nothing wrong with that because that's all incorporated into my price. I'm sure you guys must be thinking, where the hell she gets the money from to afford this? It's part of my service. And this is how you learn to price yourself as well. So perception is key, guys. And this is how you're going to try to play perception on your social media platforms, on your um, website as well. But please be careful of your ego and allow for these professionals or these individuals you look up to to critique your work even give your portfolio to somebody you want you want them to analyze it and see where you can better yourself because there's nothing wrong with that absolutely nothing wrong with that okay so any more questions just throw them give them send them through and yes and get ready for hard work whether you like it or not there's going to be hard work no matter how big or small your business is, there's going to be a lot of work involved. And if you are used to a social life before you start your business, where every weekend you are hanging out with your friends, you're going to need to understand that some of that is going to be compromised and also sacrificed. And it, there's going to be that peer pressure from your friends and your social clicks. And you're going to hear this often. Hey guys, we don't see you often. Where are you lost? You just need to explain to them, guys, I'm running a business. And if they understand, they will be there to support you. And they'll always be there without any doubt. And if they're not, life goes on, things change, and so will your business change and prosper. Right? And main key, which is going to be something that's harped upon on every website and every creative 
consistency is key especially if you are running your uh, businesses on social media and when you maintain this consistency you maintain your brand the, per, uh, the perception of your business and it has worked for us so end of the day guys do you work according to you your lifestyle and what your business demands from you right be ready for sacrifices be ready for hard work but consistency is key and do not give up many of us are available here to help you the sony alpha universe has um, content that will be coming up for the next month um, uh, to do with creators from videography to running your business to wildlife to wedding photography to marketing to branding the works everything guys it's going to be available for you and you're going to enjoy it because it's going to be there for you to to grab on and take something back and this is why we also encourage these kind of communities because even if you leave you're taking down all my notes or just taking down one word and enjoying it you are leaving back with something positive and that is fulfilling for us absolutely fulfilling so i'm just going to take two seconds and just go through our instagram uh, live and I'm so sorry, guys. I, um, I'm not like, neglecting you. I'm trying my best to go through. Okay, so, um, so how do you export your pictures for Instagram to still show the amazing quality? Okay, so that's like a completely uh, separate workshop that we will have to showcase. You can DM me, my, um, my friend, just DM me on uh TTL photography uh, Instagram profile and I'll explain further to you how we go about uh, exporting our images for social media and hello to everybody else thank you so much for being here what is your fave light modifier to use during shooting and what light source do you use with it okay so thank you so much uh, Brendan this is Brendan yeah thank you so much for your question so my favorite light uh, modifier the one i i truly love is our octabox and we use it with our godox uh, 8200 so those are our two favorites um i'm just going through more questions i'm loving the comments thank you so much um okay and we are We're going to go on again just to remind you guys about the social media hang handles again if you enjoyed this live you can catch us on our instagram and facebook uh, um, dms uh, well facebook will be inbox and instagram will be the dms just catch us through there or just email us and or phone us it's not a problem all our details are there and uh, give our fellow Sony Alpha ambassadors a follow as well. There's Matt Masson with weddings, there's Mike uh, Ilof and Carlin uh, about social media and also travel photography and travel content. Jacques Crawford with videography. There's Richard with wildlife and Marlon Detroit with wildlife. And those are such amazing creatives. So we will answer all unanswered questions later on and in um, a separate uh, live. And all of those that are coming via the Instagram DMs, we will see too later on. But I'd like to thank you and I'd lo love to thank Sony for this opportunity and uh, wishing you guys everything of the best and success. We will be back with the re um, recorded webinars as well. And don't forget to catch our fellow Sony Alpha ambassadors um, on the Sony Alpha universe. Take care of yourself and be safe.